I was speaking about the parents and the children. Wallahi, it's a topic. It's a huge topic. The love. You love your child, you correct the child. But the manner in which to speak with your children. You know, many times, a typical scenario, mom and dad, or sometimes dad, or sometimes mom, sometimes both of them do not participate in the lives of their children for many years. They don't discuss topics. They are not, they are closed, you know. Our fathers and our forefathers, their generations were different. They did not used to speak. I've never heard my dad tell my mom, I love you. But I know he probably loves her more than the love we understand when we say I love you to our own spouses. Hey, that doesn't mean I don't love my family. I do, I do, mashallah. But without uttering it, they knew it. And they, they did not wait for one another to say I love you. If they did say it, they may have said it behind closed doors. I wonder what their fathers did and their mothers did. Today, every day, if you do not send 20 text messages to your wife or husband, I love you, there will be a mini judgment day when you get back home. <laughs> End of times. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, really. And we have internet, WhatsApp, free calling, free this, but still we don't use it. Send it. Send the roses. It doesn't cost you a thing. You can send the whole garden on WhatsApp. And guess what? It costed you nothing. The only thing that's missing is the smell. I think soon there'll be technology. I was reading about it. Wallahi, they, without a joke, I'm not joking, I'm serious. They are saying that very soon technology will get to the point where you will be able to send the smell through your mobile device. I see people saying, go and read about it. Sheikh Google will confirm. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, so it's very important for us to know that while technology has advanced and communication has been made so easy with people who are very far away from you, we sometimes forget those who are the nearest. Those who are the nearest. Like I said, our parents, we didn't hear them say that. But in our case, you have to. And you have to spend more time. And the sacrifice levels are less. You have to admit. You have to agree. A long time ago, they would sacrifice. I recall a case where people suffered marital turbulence. And they separated for a long time. And many years later, they got together. House on fire, problem solved, everything gone. Mashallah. But they sacrificed for about, I think, between five and ten years. We were very young, but I recall this. And mashallah, the problem resolved. Today, five to ten minutes, we get irritated, honestly. We cannot handle sleeping in the couch separately. I'm gone. You won't see me out of the gate, out of the door. We're out. May Allah forgive us, really. Love is tested at the time of sacrifice. When the person you claim to love is now going through the most difficult times of their lives, do you still stand by them? Do you still look at their tears and wipe them off and say, I love you? That is far more genuine. When they've been embarrassed, when they've been struggling with something, when they've lost their money, lost their job, do you still stand by them? And do you still say, I love you? Subhanallah. May Allah help us to sacrifice. Sacrifice for our own children. Like I say, I was giving you the example of how people don't play a role in the lives of their children. And then at the age of 18, your son comes and says, do you know, I want to marry this person. You say, no way. Not over my dead body. So at night you hear the son getting up for tahajjud. Oh Allah, take my father away. Because he needs to go. Such a simple matter. If you were really interested and played a role from the very beginning, you would have guided your child as to what to do and what not to do. And your child would have come to you not when it's too late. Your daughter comes to you and says, you know what? Astaghfirullah, may Allah forgive us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. But an example that needs to be given is an unwanted pregnancy. Will your child come up to you to confess or to say, I need your help, dad. I need your help, mom. If that's the case, there is love between you. 
You need to get up and help them. If you don't, they will get help from somewhere else. You may lose them even as a Muslim. They made a mistake very bad. Is it happening? It's happening. In our communities? Yes, in our communities. How are they dealing with it? Well, go and find out. If that happens in your case, may Allah never make it happen to us. But if it does, and it may, and it can, you need to know how to deal with it. True love would make you stand up, rise to the occasion, embrace your child. Say, I'm very, very let down by what you've done. But let's see how we can deal with this. Let's see how best we can deal with this. Go for help. Seek some counseling. Take your child here and there. Ask for religious rulings. See what's the case. What has happened? And you don't need to scream and yell because that doesn't help. We need to be disciplined people. A few years ago, the advice would have been different. But today the world has changed. Like I said, the ruling remains the same. It's still wrong. It will not be right. But how to deal with the wrong? In a way that it is not repeated. In a way that we do not lose the person as a Muslim. People have left Islam because their parents have not dealt with them in a correct way when they made mistakes. And here come the church and it provided shelter and help. Come, we'll give you help. So the people converted. Wallahi, I know of cases. Why should that be the case? When we have a perfect deen, the problem with us, sometimes we have contaminated it with cultural norms that happen to be far from the deen. And we've always said culture comes with a lot of goodness. But where it makes life difficult for people and where it contradicts Islam and what Allah has revealed, then we will say that culture is not good.